Huh. Ninja Gaiden was released on the Sega Master System? That's right, everyone's favorite beefy-armed sleeveless ninja has made an appearance on the Sega Master System, but not in a port. Ninja Gaiden for the Sega Master System is its own game entirely. Wow, this might actually be a Gaiden. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Interactions like these are what YouTube looks at when it decides what video to feature and what comes up in searches. So it's the easiest way for you to directly support the channel and help me make better videos. The Master System version of Ninja Gaiden followed Ryu as he returns home to find that his village has been attacked. As Ryu enters the village, the last member of the Dragon Clan tells him that the sacred Bushido scroll has been taken by the Shogun of Darkness. The messenger dies, spurring on Ryu to reclaim the scroll, whose power can be used for world domination. Alright, the story isn't great. It's a basic hero's call to action, but it explains why Ryu is about to fight through 8 levels of platforming hack and slash adventure. Instead of lending exposition to the story as we've seen in the NES versions, the cutscenes here really just set up the boss of each level. It feels a little more like a pro wrestling promo than a cutscene. Oh yeah, freak out, freak out, first name, Shogun, last name, a darkness, yeah, uh huh. Let me tell you something, Ryu. I'm not happy with your decision to come after me, uh huh. But yeah, I'm the cream of the crop. Yeah, and the cream is gonna rise to the top, uh huh. Yeah, freak out, freak out. Dig it! You don't know what hard time are, daddy. Hard time for when ninjas around this country are out of work. They got four or five kids and they can't pay their wages. Can't buy their food. Hard time for when the Dragon Clan are out of work and they tell them to go home. Hard time for when a ninja worked at a job for 30 years. 30 years and they give him a sword and say, Hey, a computer took your place, daddy. That's hard times. Now I know, I may not look like your traditional ninja. My sleeves are just a little short. My arms are just a little beefy. But I'm bad and they know I'm bad. The graphics here are a big upgrade from the NES version with the large sprites and more colors. This should be no surprise to those of you familiar with the Master System, which had much better graphics than the NES. The sound and the music aren't bad, but they're not great, and the music especially, it just loops small sections over and over again. It's kind of a shame because the Master System does have really nice sound, but it's just not put to very good use here. The gameplay itself feels a little bit like a mix between the NES version and Shinobi, with the overhand climbing mechanic from the arcade game mixed in. The culture of using bizarre enemies hasn't changed, but this time instead of linebackers and boxers, you find yourself up against photographers, slimes, phone line ninjas, maybe NEC employees I guess, and ninjas who pop out and throw snowballs at you. And of course, the ninja's natural enemy makes a return, fulfilling its evolutionary duty to prey on unsuspecting ninjas. The platforming has changed quite a lot and doesn't feel nearly as tight here. It's much more forgiving. Instead of clinging to walls or climbing up, Ryu uses the common wall jump techniques in many other games, like Batman from the NES. The knockback is also not quite so extreme. These elements combined make it possible to bail out from would-be a fall by wall jumping. Further, unlike the NES version where any fall could result in losing a life, you can actually fall back to previous screens. Overall, this game doesn't seem to be quite as obsessed with the idea of knocking the hero into pits. There are even some vertical platforming areas that give the game a very different feel. It's much less hack and slash and a lot more slow-paced methodical platforming. Some areas are even full of obstacles that you have to crawl underneath, which really slows down the feel of the gameplay. 
You can also climb ladders and use the overhand climbing technique from the arcade game, and a lot of the game's heavier platforming areas rely on this technique. Luckily, it's pretty easy to do. You just press the up button. There are a lot of traps and jumping puzzles to overcome, many of which are actually a lot of fun. Overall, this is a much easier game than the NES Ninja Gaiden game, although some of the regular enemies can take two hits, which is new. Enemy sprites also don't respawn if you walk one pixel in the wrong direction, so that's nice. Boss fights are mostly pretty simple and they rely on patterns just like the NES game, but they seem a lot more forgiving and much less brutal here. Some are laid out really cool, like where you fight this mob boss sitting in his chair while his boyos attack you from all sides. It adds a little bit of novelty to the game and makes the battle more exciting. But others feel a lot like copies of the original Ninja Gaiden, like this samurai who just walks back and forth. The sub weapons are totally different, with no jump and no jump and slash and no buffalo star. You do have some homing fireballs and a fire attack that only travels downwards, as well as a big shuriken that passes through enemies. While the sub weapons aren't nearly as powerful as those in the NES game, Ninpo power is plentiful, as are life refills. Pressing both attack buttons at the same time does a screen clearing desperation attack that costs 25% of your health. Sometimes the path to the next part of the level isn't totally clear, and you have to jump off screen in order to find it. It took me a little while to figure out how to get out of level 2. There are also sometimes multiple paths, like in level 3 where you can take the low road, but it leads to a dead end. Oh, and there's an ice level because of course there is. And it's actually pretty hard. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. When I say this game is easier than the NES version, I don't mean to say that it's an easy game. There are more than a few parts where I was breaking out some colorful vocabulary, and the castle at the end is where dreams gonna die. The end boss has two forms, and if you die, you don't have to go back to the beginning of the level. Although you do have to fight the boss from the first form all over again. Now, I'm not sure if this was a glitch or not, but when I played this game, I had unlimited ninpo power from the end of stage 6 onwards, so thank goodness for small favors. The Sega Master System of Ninja Gaiden was released in 1992 in PAL regions only, including Europe, Brazil, Korea, and Australia. This is because by 1992 the Master System had failed in the US and Japan, but it was still popular elsewhere in the world. Strangely enough, instead of being called Shadow Warriors like other titles in the series, the Japan and US title of Ninja Gaiden was used here. The game was very well received critically, with most reviewers and currently has an aggregate score of 85% according to Sega Retro. Sega Force, Sega Master, and Zero magazines all gave positive reviews and 90% scores with many reviewers being impressed with the graphics and controls. It's credited as programmed by Sega, but it is believed that Sims developed the game. This is due to the end credits containing pseudonyms commonly used by employees of Sims as well as similar fonts and design elements. Sims was a development house and publisher co-owned by Sega and Sanritsu, another Japanese game publisher, and was staffed by both Sega and Sanritsu employees. Sims still operates today independently of Sega since 2004. The game was directed by Kanako Koyama and Koji Inokuchi. Inokuchi is also credited as the main programmer on the game, with Koyama handling the art. Koyama worked as a planner, producer, and artist for Sega on many Master System, Game Gear, and Mega Drive titles, including Space Harrier, Golden Axe, and Game Ground. He was also a graphic designer on the Super Famicom RPG Dark Half. Inokuchi worked as a designer and producer on many Sega titles as well, up until 1993. His credits include Master of Darkness, Game Ground, and Psychic World. The sound and music are credited to Takashi Horiguchi, who worked on sound for Alien Syndrome, Master of Darkness, and the SNES version of Arabian Nights. He later went on to work for Bon Presto. I hope you enjoyed this video on Ninja Gaiden for the Sega Master System. Have you played it? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications. If you really want to support the channel, there are some, uh, there are some affiliate links below that you can click on. I'll get a small commission off of anything that you purchase from those links. And of course, I also have a Patreon link if you would like to support the channel directly. Thank you very much, and until next time, game over.